Let's say goodbye to slippery handmade slippers by adding leather soles to the bottom of your knit and crochet slipper projects. Hey there, I'm Jess from Make and Do Crew, and by the end of this video, you're going to have a free template for cutting out your own slipper soles and know my favorite trick for finding leather inexpensively to add to my knit and crochet projects. This technique is perfect for adding soles to our two hour slipper patterns. We have both a knit and crochet version, so you can pick your favorite craft, whip up a pair of slippers in the time it takes to watch a movie, and then add these leather soles for the perfect gift, or of course, to keep for yourself. Both of those patterns come in toddler to adult sizes, so we've got everyone covered, and I even show you how to customize the stitch and the sizing, so there's no reason for anyone in your life to have cold feet from now on. The supplies you're going to need for this are obviously a piece of leather. You can find suede like this at craft stores like Michael's, Joann's, and I definitely recommend using your coupon on it because it's a little bit expensive, but it comes with so much leather. I've probably used half of mine already to make maybe six or so pair of slippers, and I can still get a lot of soles out of this piece. So especially if you're making a bunch of slippers as gifts, this is a great way to go. I also love to look for leather items at thrift stores and cut them apart so that I can give the leather a new life in my projects. So this is obviously a leather jacket. It's a little on the thinner side, so it's not the best for slipper soles, mostly because the leather will show wear when you're walking around, but it will make your slippers non-slip and it will extend the life of the yarn used in your project. To cut your leather, you're gonna want a sharp pair of scissors, and then we're going to punch the holes using a leather punch like this. Again, you can get it at any sort of craft store, and also, I definitely bought this with a coupon. It's not super expensive, but it's just one of those items that it's nice to have on hand, and of course, use a coupon when you can. You can also find them on Amazon, and I'll have a link below this video. We're going to attach our slipper soles with stitch markers in order to position them before we seam them on. So you're gonna wanna have four or six of these on hand. And I like to use a sturdy cotton yarn to sew my slipper soles on. This is Lion Brands 24 seven cotton, and it's quite strong for its thickness. Of course, you can also use the yarn that you made the slippers out of, but I like to do this because it makes the stitches less visible so that then I'm just admiring the actual knit or crocheted fabric and the leather. That's a personal choice though. Whatever you do, you want a yarn that is fairly durable because it's going to be taking the friction and weight of your body walking around. And to make it even more durable, one thing you can do is thread fishing line alongside the yarn that you're using for seaming. So you're using one strand of yarn and one strand of fishing line together as if they're one total strand. And that can make the stitching even more durable for all the walking around that you plan to do. And of course, you'll need a tapestry needle with an eye that's large enough to fit your seaming yarn through. Lastly, I find it much easier to cut these out if I have a template to follow. That really helps them be consistent between each slipper because it drives me crazy if they don't look the same. So I've created this template for you. It covers any size foot you can imagine. And this is a free download that I created for you. So the link to this is down below. You just need to pop in your email address and you'll have this instantly available to download and print. When you're choosing what template to cut out, my suggestion is to err on the larger side. Because of the way these are designed, you can always trim off extra if you decide it's too big on the slipper that you have, but generally I find a little bit more leather to be beneficial rather than less. So obviously I've already cut these out and I've cut out my leather shapes to match. So this is what's going to go on the heel of the slipper and then this goes on the toe. You can see I've already punched holes in this one. So now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in the heel piece. I like to set my leather punch to the smallest size for this. So that is just the, dictated by the size circle that's there punching through. So I've already rotated it to the smallest size. And then I'm just going to punch holes about every third of an inch or about a centimeter apart. You can see the spacing on this one. And again, I like to have it about a third of an inch or a centimeter from the edge. We want it to have enough space from the edge that it's not gonna pull through for some reason. And I find that that distance works pretty well to do the blanket stitch, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. So this is a little bit of a hand workout, <laughs> especially if you're making like 10 pair of slippers. 
you may find your hand getting tired, but for one pair of slippers, it's just a good hand strengthening exercise. So I am just popping all around this heel part. And this is the strap here that's going to be used in the back of the slipper. So it comes up like this and folds in, that's at the heel. So as you can see, we want to seam it up until it folds over. And in order to do that, we want some holes punched up this little strip of leather. I like to poke holes an inch or two up here and then as I'm seaming it and seeing how it's going to fall on the actual slipper, then I punch a few more holes and another two holes over here so I can fold it over. And that just helps me not have extra holes that are showing in leather that isn't seamed. So I don't really wanna have holes up here if I can avoid it because I'm not actually gonna seam in them. So by attaching it and then punching the holes, I can get the placement just right. So for now, I'm going to stop right there with my holes and then punch holes on the opposite side to make this fairly symmetrical going down the back of the slipper. And then I just want to finish up going around this section, adding holes so that I'm ready to start seaming. All right, this is the slipper we're going to add a sole to, and I've already added the sole on this slipper. So I wanna show you how we're placing it. In this case, my slippers do have a right and a left because this seam is intended to go on the outside of the foot. So this is the left and this is the right. And the reason that's important is because I like to put this curved part of my sole, the toe sole, to where the big toe is. So if you've ever had bunion pain, this is right where you're feeling it. And we're going to put that this way. If your slippers don't have a right and a left, my suggestion is just to do this in a mirror image way. So your second sole like this, you would want them to be like this because then the wear of the slippers can determine a right and a left and you have a mirror image pair. I like to have a little bit of my leather coming up on the toe. I think it's a cute look and it also makes the whole project a little bit more durable. So you can see here, it's just curved up a bit. So I like to place that first and then I'm gonna flip this over and make sure everything looks good. This <laughs> big toe bunion bump out is over here and then everything else is looking good. So once I am pretty happy with the placement, I'm gonna use stitch markers to attach it and hold it in place. And I know this step <laughs> seems like probably one you could skip, but it's so annoying to have things slide around as you're seaming and then finish and realize that they got a little bit mispositioned. So I always like to pin things down when I'm seaming because it just reduces the likelihood I have to redo my work. If you don't have stitch markers, then you could definitely use something like safety pins here, whatever you have on hand that can hold your sole in place. All right, that's looking pretty good. I have my yarn threaded on my tapestry needle here, and I really don't like to have to join multiple strands of yarn in order to seam on one piece of leather, partly because it creates more knots inside the slipper. So I like to cut a strand of yarn that is about the length of my wingspan, basically the length where any longer would be quite unmanageable. Then I thread it on the tapestry needle and tie a knot so that the yarn is doubled over. We're going to use two strands to sew on our slipper soles, and that's helpful for making them a little bit more durable for everyday wear. The first thing that I want to do is get my yarn anchored inside the slipper and we want to attach it in some place that's not going to be too irritating to the foot. So I like to put it a little bit off to the side. There is going to be a knot there so we just don't want it to be somewhere that your foot is going to feel it a lot and the way I'm doing this is inserting my needle and then I'm just putting my needle through the strands of yarn that are on there so that I'm tacking it down. So I just basically split this, these two strands and thereby tied it in a knot around a strand of yarn here. And that's because this little knot I have is not going to be strong enough to hold it in place within my knit stitches. And now that that's secured, I can pop my needle out here to the outside of my slipper. It's a good idea to just check real quick, make sure you didn't accidentally sew through your slipper or something, because that'd be a huge bummer <laughs> to finish up and realize your slipper was seamed closed. We are going to use a blanket stitch to attach these soles. So if you've ever done this along the edge of 
of a baby blanket, or if you've done embroidery, you're familiar with the stitch. It's quite simple and it really looks pretty to trim anything out like this sole. So to do this, I want my yarn starting on the outside edge of the slipper. So it's just popping out from the slipper there. And then I'm going to insert my needle from the hole out to the edge of the sole. And I wanna pick up, I'll make sure I pick up a little bit of yarn as I go, because the whole point here is to attach the sole to the yarn. And then I'm pulling this through, and as I have a little loop left, I'm going to pop my needle through it to pick up that loop. And that is going to create our first stitch. So now I'm going to head clockwise because I'm right-handed. And the next thing I'm going to do is repeat that same process here by putting my needle through the hole, picking up a little bit of yarn and then popping it out like this, pulling it through. And when I have a small, oops, I caught a stitch marker there. When I have a small loop, then I'm just going to pass my needle back through to pick up that loop and fasten it down. So the blanket stitch, the reason it trims things out nicely is that it has one bar that goes around like this. It'll go around the slipper sole and then one bar that goes onto the leather. So let's try that again. I'm going through the hole, picking up some yarn, coming out the slipper and then pulling a loop through like this, and then just going back through that loop. So I find it easiest to go from the back to the front as I'm going through that loop. And once your whole yarn that you're working with is a little shorter, you can do this in one fluid motion. So I'll show you what that looks like now. My yarn is back here. I'm working through the hole, picking up some yarn and popping it out the slipper. And then you can see my loop is very big, but it's essentially right here. So I can actually just pull my yarn up like this, and then I don't have to think of it as two separate steps. I've just completed the stitch like that. And you've probably noticed I'm kind of fastening down each stitch as I go, and that's because it gets harder to do this. If you don't do it as you go, it's gonna be harder to influence the tension of stitches way back here. So I just like to fasten it down. You're not wanting anything to scrunch up and be bumpy, but you do want enough tension there that it really feels fastened down. And you can see I'm putting my hand inside the slipper. That's giving me some leverage to push against with my needle. It's also helping me make sure that I'm not seaming my slipper closed. So let's try again with this blanket stitch. I'm just going through the hole up out into the slipper. And then you can see my needle is already through the loop. So I can pull this up and tighten it down. As I approach a stitch marker here, I can just pop that out and keep going. And we'll do one more right here, up through the hole, out to the slipper, and then pull my yarn up and tighten it down. Isn't that so pretty? I just love techniques like this. We have so many more fun projects like this coming up. And if you're enjoying this, I would love for you to subscribe to our channel because I don't want you to miss these projects that I'm super excited about. Okay, from here, I am going to continue in the blanket stitch around the slipper and I will meet up with you right here so I can show you how to fasten off when you're done with one piece of leather. I have one hole left, so I'm going to complete my last stitch and then I want to create a bar of yarn that goes right across here to finish off this section. So I'm just missing this little part right here. And to do that, I'm just going to put my needle under the vertical bar, go across like that, and now I've sort of completed the loop and I can insert my needle back into the inside of the slipper to fasten off. So to fasten off, I like to do it kind of how we started. And again, I want it not in the most noticeable foot spot that might be irritating. I'm just going to put my needle through a loop of yarn, create a little loop for myself and then insert my needle and pull it through. 
if you're familiar at all with sewing, it's a little sewing knot. And then I'm going to do a few of those. And you can even do them kind of on top of each other. That can create the tightest knot. But of course, we just don't want any huge bumps that are going to be annoying to the person's foot who's wearing these slippers. So sometimes I just spread them out a little bit. I can go back through that loop again, and then I'm just going to weave in this yarn tail for extra security. I'm assuming these slippers might even go in the wash, so I want everything to be safe and secure. That's looking pretty awesome, huh? Speaking of washing, I've gotten this question a lot of if you can wash your slippers, and my experience is that yes, you can. Of course, this is something, if it's especially if you're wearing it with bare feet, you want to be able to wash it. And I like to just wash them on cold according to whatever instructions the yarn label has. And the leather is not going to come out exactly the same. Obviously, it's likely to be a little stiffer, especially if then you take them out and you air dry them, which is what I would recommend. You just kind of reshape your slipper and the leather will be stiffer the texture will change slightly but personally I want them to be clean and I don't mind them looking a little worn in because my hope is that they're worn and loved and get a lot of use now we're going to position the back piece of leather and I like to have this coming up a little bit so that I see just a little bit of that oval section. So that tends to be the first place that I get set up. And then, like we talked about, we can have this piece come up the back and form a little loop. So once this is in the right position, I'm going to check it, make sure it's kind of lined up with this one and not off kilter much and then it's lined up with, in this case, I have a seam right here because these slippers are actually just made from rectangles. It's quite amazing, they're so beginner friendly. So we are going to line this piece of leather up with that seam and get a little bit of the leather showing on the back of the heel. And then when I'm happy with that position, I'll pin this in place. I've got my yarn attached. I started with a fresh strand of yarn here and tied it to the inside of the slipper just like I demonstrated before. And now I'm going to pop it out so it's on the outside of my fabric. And just like we did before, I'm going to insert it from the leather out to the yarn and then pull a loop through like that and then go right through my loop to create that little, that's kind of like an upside down L. Again, I'm just going to go through my leather out through the yarn and then in this, this time I have my loop set up so I can just pull the yarn through. I don't have to go through the second step of pulling through the loop. If you ever see this happen, you want to correct it before you keep going because like I said before, the tension is just harder to adjust as you're a few stitches out from that. So I like to just fasten it down and then carry on. So let's keep working around the sole and I'll show you then how to handle this part that goes up the back of the ankle. Dang it, I think I am going to lose at yarn chicken because I need to still work all the way back down here. So I am going to fasten this off and add a new strand of yarn. Fresh strand of yarn and I'm just inserting my needle. I'm popping it back out where I finished the last stitch. So I've already tied it to the inside. Now I can position it, make sure we're ready to go. And then I'm just going to continue as if that never happened. So I'm gonna do one more blanket stitch right here. And then we're going to check on how this little tab in the back is looking and if we need to punch any more holes. Okay, I think that we are good on holes coming up the back. We don't really need one more hole right up here, but we do want to poke holes so that we can fold this over and fasten this down inside. So one of the ways I like to do that is just by folding it over, making sure I understand where this can overlap. And then I want to punch two holes in the sort of bottom slash top of this tab, <laughs> depending on how you're looking at it, like that. 
and that's going to allow me to fold it over and just work right through those holes so that that tab stays in place. So I'm just going through the slipper, picking up that leather like that, and then working across so that my needle can come out the other side. And I want it to just come out at the top of the leather, so the outside edge, because now we're going to work the other direction. So I'm holding this in the opposite way I was before, but again, I'm going to go from the leather side out to the yarn and then work through my loop or get my loop caught on it, everything. <laughs> and then we've got that one going and we can continue like this until we get back to where we started this round. With my last blanket stitch complete, I'm going to pick up that bar, the horizontal bar, work under that so that I can kind of connect the line visually and then put my needle back to the inside of the slipper like this and then complete a few of those sewing knots. I just insert my needle, create a loop, put my needle through that loop and do a few more of those. You can spread them out if you like. It's not the prettiest, but you do want this to be secure so that these slippers can be enjoyed for a long time. How cute is that? Doesn't the leather just add such a magical touch? I love to give these slippers as gifts, partly because you don't actually have to know the person's exact shoe size. The sizing is quite forgiving, and especially with the addition of leather, they just feel like something very special, even though these particular slippers are made just from a simple rectangle. So if you have enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, and will you leave a comment and let me know if you used our two-hour knit or crochet slipper pattern, or if you used a different slipper pattern to attach your souls to. I'd love for the comment section to become a resource for people for cool slipper patterns that you can use these soles on. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out our tutorial for two-hour knit slippers. Thanks for watching and happy making!